Hi everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today. I'm tying an Olive X Caddis. Fantastic dry caddis pattern. Um, works wonderfully on the rivers. Uh, obviously, you can change the size and the colour to suit where you're fishing. But it's a great wee dry. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone that wants to support the channel, get access to the members only content and be entered into the giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button, that's all appreciated. So I've got my hook in my vise, this is a 16, uh, it's a TMCO 100 SPBL. And I've run on some uni and all I've done. All I've fine, whatever, so it's just the, I had that on the, the, the bobbin holder anyway. Got to catch in for my shock some Antron or Zelon, right? Sparkle yarn, you can use any of them, it doesn't really matter. And this is three quarters roughly of uh, the width of a of the yarn as it comes off the card. Um, for a 14 I would use the full width, an 18, maybe about half, a 20, definitely half. Or even slightly less. I've caught that in so that the waist piece is just about the length of the body and then I'm just going to come up and gather it up with my thread. Now I'm no too fussed if it's super tidy right? um, with a couple of strands there sticking out don't worry about that. You can easily just come in and knock them off. The dubbing over it anyway. Length body length, trim it away. Now I like to come in, put a wee taper, just knock that squareness out of the out of the shuck. You don't need to do that, it's just I don't like the square edge, you know, it bothers me a wee bit. Um, but loads of folk use ex-caddis that are not trimmed like that and they catch plenty of fish so it's up to you do it or don't body I'm just using all of super fine dubbing but you can use whatever you prefer right SLF fine rabbit and antron fine you know up to you I'm just building a tight wee riddle of dubbing and I'm leaving a decent amount of space um, of bare thread right my thread's sitting at the still sitting up at the four fifths mark so I've got some bare thread to use up to get me to the back so that my dubbing can start right at the shock and then you see quite a thin, even though I'm tying a 16, which isn't, you know, it's a reasonably decent sized fly. I'm still using quite a thin noodle of dubbing. And if you need to add more, you need to add more. Just building that body. It's better to have a body made of like more turns of a thinner, tighter dubbing rope because um, it just makes your fly float better and it is also more durable. Just added a bit more there just to make sure I can get all the way up. That's a wee bump there. I can just sort of smooth it. And then I'm going to add a tiny pinch more and dub right to the eye. This is something you can do, it just it helps the wing to seat better, really. Um, the note of the bare thread. You don't need to do this, but it also I mean, it looks good as well when viewed from below. So that you get the whole thing kind of matches rather than the end of the the end of the body and then this 
bit of thread with a lumpy head on top. Um, you know, because as we all know, real caddis don't have those big, those big sort of muddlery heads that we put on elk hairs and all this, but the fish don't seem to mind on the fly, it makes the fly float. It certainly adds to the, the fish ability of the fly, which is what really matters. And but I just like that because it smooths it smooths out the transition a bit better. If you don't like to do it, don't do it. Um, you can tie it in fine on the thread. Now I've got a bunch of coastal deer here. I've just clipped off for my wing roots. It's quite a lot of under for um, in this hair. Meaning I need to give it a severe cleaning every time I use it. Every bunch you cut, but that's just part and parcel. The hair's actually quite good once you got all the under fur out of it. Um, but I mean, even there, I've already cleaned it, and there's still a bit of fuzz in it. So I'm just rolling it and spreading it. Take this, draw the comb through it again. Hopefully I've not lost too much. Always cut more than the width of your wing. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're going to be cleaning your hair, which you probably are, cut more than the width. Because you can take some off before you tie it in. Now, that's actually worked out quite good for me there. Got a nice clean edge. And the wing's probably about the right thickness. Um, you could draw some away, but I'd rather have the wing a wee bit too thick, and then I can trim it on the river. If I need to. So, I've measured my wing so that the tips were coming to just the back, and I've cut it already, and I've got a nice straight edge here. I'm going to take the two hairs away that I've disturbed. I'm going to offer it in one, two turns, tighten. You can add another couple and then just sort of draw it back. Right. Don't worry if it's sort of fight she in any way. Draw it back and you can actually run a turn of thread into the head there. And then come down in front at the hook eye. And then it's just a case of whip finishing. In front of that wee head. see there everything that's the wing and the hair is above the hook if you look at it from the bottom it's a nice clean uninterrupted run right up to the eye with the dubbing the wing gives you a nice form on you know you get that nice sort of silhouette on top and then you get the wee head there's a couple of hairs there that I could if I was really fussy tidy up but you really don't need to you know um, it's, I think it's a lot better to tie the head like that than to tie it in long and start trying to trim it to shape you never really get the shape right so there you go there's the Olive X Caddis easy wee tie quick tie you can rapidly fill up a row of these in your box and they, they catch fish like anything when there's a caddis hatch on. So I hope that was useful, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Take lines guys, bye.